Hello my friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mackenzie if you're new here and if you didn't know this month is suicide prevention month so I wanted to come on here and do a little suicide prevention type video. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I struggled with depression and suicidal thoughts in the past around like three years ago and to this day I still have like intrusive thoughts but I've kind of pulled myself out of like the mindset that like this world isn't meant for me so I have those intrusive thoughts and I'm like please go away you're wrong stop talking to me um but it took a lot for me to get here and I know not everyone that struggles with suicidal thoughts is there yet so I wanted to do a video talk about my experience story with depression and intrusive thoughts and go a little bit into how I got out of that and also talk about how you can get out of that if you're struggling and then also how you can help someone struggling because i've had that question a lot and even like my mom who i think is the most amazing person in the whole entire world had a difficult time understanding how to help me even though my mom also around my age struggles with the same thing it just it's hard to help someone go through it because you don't fully understand their thoughts so i want to kind of talk about what I would do if I knew someone was struggling like that also if you see me looking down at my phone it's because I have a list of what I want to talk about so that I don't get scatterbrained and like get distracted um, and I'm still a little sick so if I sniffle my nose I'm very sorry but I'm gonna try my best not to anyways let's start with my story on like depression and intrusive thoughts so a lot of the times when you're struggling with like depression or anxiety or an eating disorder one a lot of the times comes with another one so when i was deep in my eating disorder that is when my depression really took off i was already kind of struggling like just not feeling included when i was in when i was at uf and just not feeling like i belonged and i don't know i just didn't feel like i was good enough for this world and then i developed an eating disorder and my feelings just like skyrocketed um, and I think that's due to like a lack of food and energy and my body just felt so depleted um, But yeah, so that's when my depression really started taking off and This was like 20 yeah early 2020 and I was really tiny like My mom wanted to hospitalize me and my doctor was like well, obviously she's struggling with like depression too so why don't we put her on antidepressants and then also it's an appetite stimulant i've talked about this in my eating disorder video but just for like a backstory if you haven't watched that um yeah so my my doctor was like why don't we put her on lexapro because it's a stimulant for appetite and it'll help with her depression so i go on lexapro i was on it for like a few months it did really help me um i definitely put on weight i kind of felt more mentally stable and at this time it was COVID, so i couldn't really like see a therapist because my therapist at uf obviously i left uf so i couldn't see her anymore and then um in south florida a lot of the therapists weren't seeing new clients and i really didn't want to do online because i don't know for me i feel like in-person connection is a lot better like i don't think i can cry to someone on the phone and i needed to cry i needed to let all my feelings out so i kind of pushed off therapy for a while and then come end of summer i was still on lexapro but i kind of started going downhill again i started getting really sad really anxious all the time so i found a therapist and i've been going to this therapist for the past three years i love her um it's called fresh start solutions if you live in south florida um they don't take insurance though so it is kind of pricey but for me you're paying for your mental health so it's worth it anyways yeah, started going to therapy and I felt stable again. And when I started to feel stable, I was like, you know what? I want to go off of Lexapro. Like, I don't want to be reliant on meds. Which, if you want to hear a whole episode about meds, I am uploading one on my podcast. Which, yes, I launched a podcast. I'm so excited. I'm going to link it in the description. But um, I'm uploading a video talking all about antidepressants next week. So stay tuned for that. Um... But yeah, I decided I wanted to go off Lexapro because I was like, what if I'm just like not myself anymore on these meds? Lexapro made me feel kind of numb. So I wasn't sad, but I wasn't happy. But a lot of times depression also like 
is just a feeling of numbness of just feeling like there's nothing good or bad in life and you're just kind of going day by day so i was like let me go off of this i'd rather feel sad than feel nothing so i went off of my meds and then i was kind of stable for a few months and then skip forward to the next 2021 i was dealing with like just a lot of life changes i don't know i was cha i lost like my closest friend group in high school and i was doing long distance with my boyfriend like everything was just like i felt really alone i felt really isolated and i just felt like my anxiety was like getting in the way of friendships and my relationship and my family like everything was just a lot going on and when i got really sad i kind of relied on other people to make me happy which is really bad <laughs> and i would not recommend doing that because you are your own light and happiness but at the time i was relying on other people and the other people in my life could not handle it like especially because like i wasn't just like oh give me attention i'll be happy i was like give me attention reassure me do this do that because i was depressed like down bad and so I kind of found myself really isolated because I realized what I was doing and I didn't want to do that to anyone. So I was really isolated, super alone, and I started having really bad intrusive thoughts where my brain was like, you're just a burden to everyone around you. You need to stop, like, just leave this earth. Like, it'll be better without you. You won't be causing people problems. Like, even my mom and Justin, like, I felt like I couldn't talk to them about my feelings because it had been going i had been sad for almost two years at this point and I was like I just don't want to keep burdening them with this why do I still feel this way like maybe I'm just better off not on this earth like I don't know so <clears throat> like even in my relationship like with Jake I wanted to break up with him because I didn't want to like burden him constantly going to him crying because I just wasn't feeling like I was enough and I wasn't happy and then in my head I'm like well then it makes my family and my friends and my boyfriend think that they're not making me happy but that's not what it was I just there was just something missing inside me that I just didn't feel like I was enough and I constantly felt like there wasn't enough in this life for me I don't know depression is like I don't even know how to explain it half the time but yeah so I started having really bad intrusive thoughts and then like one day I remember this so vividly I don't know, Andrea, if you'll watch this, but you saved my life that day and you don't even know it. I was just like so in my head and my intrusive thoughts were screaming at me. And I had posted on my like Snapchat private story. Because one thing about me is like I had these feelings and like I thought talking about them to people was like a burden, but I would still like post about it to my close friends and then if they wanted to reach out they could because in my head i'm like oh man i'm not being a burden if they want to help me um which shout out to all my friends boyfriend family because everyone always did want to help me i just couldn't see it but um so i posted it on my private story like i was like i am just so sick i don't understand like i don't want to be here anymore this is so hard whatever and I was like convincing myself that I was gonna get in my car and go drive as fast as possible and crash into a tree and like everything would be fixed like my life would have come to an end and no one else would have to deal with it and whatever so Andrea called me and I answered and she was just talking me down from the ledge and she I didn't even tell her what I was thinking in my head I just had the thought I wasn't gonna tell her because I knew she would talk me down from it but she did remind me that like I am loved and people want to help me and this world is meant for me and so I still ended up getting in my car but she stayed on the phone with me because she was like why don't you just go for a drive not knowing that like my way of wanting to not be alive anymore was to get in my car and drive but she was like let's go get in your car go drive around and I'll stay on the phone with you so she stayed on the phone with me and I just like kind of drove with the windows down and recentered myself and then she was like, she stayed on the phone all the way until I got home. And she saved my my life that night without even knowing because I did not want to be here. And honestly, I think the only person I've ever told that story to is my therapist. So yeah, now the whole internet knows and everyone that watches my videos. But um, 
anyways that was kind of when I was like okay I need to get back on meds I need to start going to therapy twice a week so when I did tell my therapist that story she was like yeah we are getting you in to see a psychiatrist we are you are coming in twice a week we are taking care of this so I started going in twice a week I got on Zoloft and I also started these like anxiety meds which I wouldn't recommend I hate them but in the moment they did help me it's like a like a panic disorder medicine but I wasn't having panic attacks I was having anxiety attacks but either way it helps you in the moment and it like completely numbs you so you don't feel anything but you only take it when you need it anyways I do think that those really helped me in the moment but not for the long run um but yeah, so when it comes to recovery from like these feelings, I would definitely say therapy is the number one thing. Number one, like 110%. Find a good therapist, find someone that you can trust. I would definitely try to talk about meds with someone. You don't have to get on them, but I do think it's a good idea to at least talk about it and consider it. And then I'm gonna talk about like three other things that like I feel like helped me recover and could help you. The number one thing being kind of have a routine for yourself. I don't know, I felt like at this point in my life I was doing online school, I wasn't working, and I was living at home, so I didn't really have to get out of bed at any point in time. I didn't have any purpose in my life, but I realized that that is kind of probably why I was feeling how I was feeling. And my mom's always been super big on like me working, not even for like money purposes, but just because she knows my personality and I need to be doing stuff and I need to be feeling productive so I was nannying I was babysitting like kind of part-time at the time and then I took it to full-time so I had like things to do with my life um yeah so I kind of had a routine with that I got a little bit more on top of school and made sure I was like getting on class and like online every day and doing stuff and I would do little things like go get my favorite coffee from Starbucks or go get a smoothie from my favorite smoothie place because my therapist always said like make sure you're treating yourself like you deserve it and you don't think that you do but you do um so that'd be my top tip okay my second tip might sound a little silly but like accept that you're sad like i would be so hard on myself and get so mad that i felt the way i did but the reality was i was depressed and the only way i was going to the only way I was going to like step over that depression and become who I am now was to accept where I was at and kind of figure out why instead of just like being mad at myself for having feelings because we all have feelings and it's normal to have them and maybe I have some chemical imbalances going on in my brain but it's okay, it's normal, like we're all people, we all struggle with things, everyone has their own things but yeah I had to like remind myself that it's okay not to be okay it's okay to have feelings and now we need to work on overcoming these feelings and becoming the best version of myself instead of always being so hard on myself and then my third and final tip would be to do something every day that puts a smile on your face and i know like when you're depressed you might not actually put a smile on your face but just something that can like spark a little bit of emotion in you positive emotion whether it be going to play with puppies, my dogs are my happy place, and these smoochies when I was really depressed went with me everywhere, Snickers specifically, but he doesn't want to come up here. Um, Duke's a little, he's a crazy boy, so I can't really like bring him into Publix because he would bark at everyone, but bring them everywhere, cuddle them, love them. Just know that someone in this life loves you, and if you can't convince yourself that it's a person or people, Go love a dog because dogs are always so cuddly and affectionate. Right, Tuki? Okay, you can go play. Love you. Yeah, so even if it's petting a dog or... For me, I was babysitting at the time and I have major baby fever. I don't actually want kids right now, but I love kids. And so nannying was a huge, just like, serotonin boost in my life. Playing with babies and the, I think she was four at the time the little four-year-old now she's seven. She's so big, but um That was another like huge highlight of my life again. Like I said before getting my Starbucks or my smoothie or Going shopping and buying something because for me that is a huge serotonin boost Which is so bad because I spend so much money, but like at least I'm happy and I'm here <laughs> um, Going on a walk to boost your serotonin going to the beach and jumping in the ocean, waking up for sunrise and just feeling super productive and happy. 
there's so much you could do to just like boost your serotonin a little tiny bit and I know when you're depressed you don't even want to get out of bed but sometimes you really have to force yourself like you have to be like I'm getting out of bed because it's going to make my day just a tiny bit better and over time it's going to get easier and you're going to start doing more than one thing a day that makes you happy but I don't know you just have to know that life is also like a roller coaster our emotions are roller coasters so not every day is going to be easy some days you're going to be happier than others and some days you're going to be like why am i going backwards but you're not going backwards you're just moving up you're climbing the mountain but mountains are like boop, 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 boop. and then one day i'll get to the top <laughs> also this is random but a lot of people talk about meditation being super helpful when you're like struggling with depression i personally can't sit still i've gotten better now but especially when i was like super depressed and anxious every day of my life my brain didn't shut up and i could not meditate but yoga is more of like a moving meditation for me so i can i can like fully drown out my thoughts when i'm focusing on like moving in a yoga practice and then at the end of the class there is the meditation part like it's like a five minute meditation but the whole class is like a meditation for me because i separate my body from my mind and i just really focus on yoga not my thoughts so that's a really good one obviously yoga is not for everyone so maybe just like try working out and like not thinking of anything except the workout could be a good option okay now i want to talk about three tips for someone trying to help someone else struggling with depression so if it's your child your best friend your significant other whatever it may be um this is what i would recommend to help that person with their depression obviously every person is different and how you would like go about helping them is different but this is just like an overview of like what i would do to help okay the first thing i would do is just try to talk to them you don't even have to be like i feel like you're depressed like i want to help you just talk to them have a normal conversation and be like how have you been and then if they're like oh, i'm good be like no how have you really been i can tell something's been up I love you so much and whatever's going on with you i want to help you i know that you have so much going for you in this life and i want to help you achieve it and chase your dreams and do all the things you love but in order for me to help you with that i need to know what actually is going on and then if they're open to talking to you amazing that's what we would hope for and if they're not maybe suggest going to therapy but how i talk about therapy is i'm like therapy is for everyone therapy doesn't mean you need help because a lot of times people are like oh therapy is for like weak people that like don't know how to deal with their emotions but no therapy is actually here to help you cope with your emotions and understand them better it could just be normal everyday thoughts that you're talking about with your therapist it doesn't necessarily have to be like super like sad and deep thoughts that you talk about every time but yeah kind of try to talk to them about going to therapy and just be like i think it could be really good for you Maybe if you've been going, mention how it's changed your life in ways that like aren't all related to depression. And then if they do open up to you and talk to you about their depression, remind them that depression is a mental illness. It is not a weakness and it is not a personal flaw. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just struggling with something. So try to help them separate who they are from what they're dealing with. For me, I was like, I'm depressed. I'm a depressed person. But in reality, I'm not a depressed person. As we know now, I'm very happy and bubbly. I was struggling with depression. And I feel like that's very hard for someone that is struggling with depression to separate. So definitely try to remind them that they are not a depressed human being. It's not gonna be like that for the rest of their lives. They are struggling with depression and remind them that they don't have to struggle with it for the rest of their lives they can go reach out and get help and even if they are struggling with it for a while they can at least find coping mechanisms that help them and make it a little easier and then the last tip is for really anyone struggling like either if the person you're trying to help doesn't want to talk about their feelings or if they do want to talk about their feelings give them positive reinforcement remind them it doesn't have to be every day but as much as you can why you love them um some of the positive things about them and just like really let them know how loved they are and how worthy they are and 
that they belong on this earth and that life is worth living and that they are meant to be here one really good way to do this is maybe put like little sticky notes all over their apartment or house and just be like you are loved you are worthy like little positive affirmations everywhere or you could just like text them once a week or once a day or whatever the situation is just make sure that they know how loved they are and if you have other friends and family that could also do this i think it could be really helpful to just have like the constant love and support coming in because during a time where you're super depressed it feels very isolating and lonely so it's nice to know that like you are loved and yeah that's the end of this video obviously i'm not like a registered therapist or professional in any way but i have struggled and these are just some of my thoughts and how i recover and possible ideas to help someone else recover again i'm always here for any one of you i don't care if i've never met you before please reach out to me i would love to talk to you and i hope this can help someone make their day just a little bit better um if you know anyone struggling with depression or if this video could help anyone please share it don't forget to like comment and subscribe do all the things and i will see you in the next video love you guys bye